So I'm going to type in dolphin hyphen llama3 and then I'm going to press submit. And you can see it kind of goes away over there, telling me it's processing. It suggests it's going to take just over a minute. So we'll speed this up a little bit. And you can see that now it's done and it says you can find your repo here and then it's got a link. What you saw there is a hugging face space that lets you quantize large language models to the GGUF format. The building blocks of LLMs are weights, which are arrays of 16-bit floating point numbers. Quantization reduces the size of each value in those arrays, usually to four bits. So why do we want to quantize? So the basic idea is we want to be able to run LLMs on our laptops, and those laptops don't have anywhere near the specs of high-end GPU machines. For example, my machine is a Mac M1 from 2021, and it has 64 gigabytes of RAM shared between the GPU and the CPU. And then while we're doing this quantization, we want to try not to lose the quality of the initial model. GGUF, in case you've not seen it before, is a binary format for quantized models, and it's kind of the de facto standard, I would say, these days. So there are a lot of models that are already quantized, but if you find one that isn't and you want to try it out, you can tr use this GGUF-my-repo hugging face space, which I came across recently. So you'll need to make sure that you're logged in to your hugging face account, and then you can see you get this nice UI. So at the top, we've got the model ID. So we can type in any model ID on Hugging Face. Then we can choose the quantization model. And you can see there are a range of different quantizations that we can do. So we're going to, the, the number is basically the second number is how many bits do you want to reduce each weight to? Uh, so I normally just leave it on the default. And then we can choose to use an importance matrix, which is a technique used to improve the quality of quantized models. And so you can see there are some slightly different uh, quantization types that you can use there. You could choose to have it under a private repo or by default it will be public. And then finally you can choose whether to split the model which will kind of chop it up when it's downloading it which will uh, hopefully make it easier in case you have network issues. I found that option is a little bit flaky so I've not been using it. Okay, so now we can type in a model ID. So I'm gonna type in dolphin hyphen llama3. So dolphin is fine tuning that's been done to lots of different models. So you'll find loads of different ones with this dolphin prefix. And then I'm gonna press submit. And you can see it kind of goes away over there, telling me it's processing, it suggests it's gonna take just over a minute. So we'll speed this up a little bit. And you can see that now it's done and it says you can find your repo here and then it's got a link. So we'll click on that and you can see it's created a new model under my Mark H. Needham uh, account. And we can see if we click through, we see we've got the files. It's just got pretty much just one interesting file. That's the GGUF file. And you can see it's just under five gigabytes in size. We can then click on the name of the model and it will copy it to our clipboard. So if we want to download it to our machine, you can of course just go to that files page and click download. I've been using this tool called HF Downloader. So I can paste in my link there and it will then download this. And the nice thing here is that if it gets interrupted, it's going to continue. We can then do tree on the downloads folder and you can see that my GGUF file is in there. I find the easiest way to run GGUF files locally is to use Llama CPP. So I'm going to do a brew install and you can see I've already got that installed. And then what we can do is we can say, We'll define our model, so the path of our model, and then we can call llama CLI hyphen M, pass in the model, and we're going to tell it interactive first, so it's not going to make up a prompt and, and run that. Instead, it's going to wait for us to type something in, and we'll do one of my silly prompts. So who would win in the fight, a lion or three giraffes? And it reckons a, a lion would win this fight. So let's come back to the Hugging Face space again. We'll try a different model. So I'm gonna, I really want to try out the Phi 3 vision model. So let's type that in. Uh, and select it. And you see it comes back saying, hey, error converting that one, this model, Phi 3 for causal LM is not supported. And so it got me sort of exploring a bit and I kind of realized this is actually Llama CPP under the hood. So Llama CPP can do quantization of models. And uh, so I downloaded that project to my machine and then I did a, worked out that model.register is how you can work out which models it can actually quantize. And if we search there, you can see many of the, uh, the things you'd expect. So we've got the Llama for causal LM, We've got Mistral, we've got Mixtral, you can see Grok is in there, DBRX, if we scroll down a little bit, little bit you can see Quen, we've got Phi and Phi 3. Um, but it only covers the ones that are actually in here, and so Phi 3 Vision is one that's not supported. So there are a bunch of people asking for new ones to be supported on their GitHub issues. So, so far, my summary of this tool is it's good for fine-tuned models. If you find one that's fine-tuned on Phi 3 or Llama 3 or Mistral, it's probably going to work. It doesn't work for merged models, and then there are some newer models that, that aren't yet supported. And splitting does seem flaky, but I think this is a really good start. Like, it saves you having to, to do it on your own machine. You can kind of just go to this UI uh, and get it done. And if you want to learn more about Llama CPP, which we use to run these models, check out this video next.